Hey guys, Jamie the Sour Rain Channel. Welcome back. Today we are going to make a bath bomb cupcake. So this is actually a three-part bath bomb. The very bottom is going to be the bath bomb. And then on top, we have a lovely whipped soap base. And then we have a melt and pour embed. Now with the soap base, what I didn't want to do is just use a whipped soap and then you get it into the shrink wrap and it completely loses all of its design. So what I did was I added a little bit of melt and pour soap in with the whipped soap base. And that really helps to harden it up. And then that way, as as you can see all of the design work inside of our cupcake stays intact and then on the very top we have just a little melt and pour embed now when you're making these you're going to want to make sure that you seal them when you're done because not only should you seal a bath bomb so no humidity gets in and ruins it also the melt and pour soap if you don't seal that up if it's not covered with some kind of plastic or something over top of it it's going to get glycerin dew which is basically the moisture from the air is going to create little dew specks on your soap so best just to wrap it up now i used a cellophane wrapping thing but if you don't have one just use some saran wrap it doesn't have to be super fancy and i also really wanted to show you two different types of coloring in this bath bomb so i'm going to go ahead and make some that are made with a lake dye which will actually dye your tub and then i'm going to make some that are with a mica powder which might tint your tub a little bit but it's not going to color the bath water in the same way that a lake dye would and i kind of wanted to show you the difference between the two I did put the full recipe for these down in the description box below. I also put a link to my blog. So on my blog, there's actually a printable recipe for this, which might make it a little bit easier because there are so many components. Um, also on the blog is a little bit more information about all the ingredients, why we use them, what you can swap them out with, everything like that. Without further ado, let's dive in and make our bath bomb cupcakes. Here's the ingredients for our bath bomb cupcakes. So we have baking soda and citric acid. These are like dry, um, you know when you used to do the volcano in grade school and you would do vinegar and baking soda and it'd fizz up? That's what this is, just in dry form. So when these are mixed together and they're introduced into water, this is what creates the fizziness for a bath bomb. Now the rule of thumb is you do two parts baking soda to one part citric acid. Next we have some Epsom salt, and I went ahead and I ground this up a little bit more because I didn't want the crystals in this cupcake bath bomb, and this is just gonna add some benefits into the bath bomb for your water. And then we have polysorbate 80, so this is gonna go ahead and help mix the oils into the water so it's not super slippery. It really helps to get everything to disperse nicely in the tub. A little bit of cocoa butter, and you can swap this out for a different butter if you'd like. And then our fragrance oil. Now I'm using sugared strawberry, but you can use any one that you would like. And the cocoa butter has a little bit of a chocolate smell, so it's going to make the strawberry have just a little bit of a hint of a chocolate smell to it, which I think will be nice for this cupcake bath bomb. Go ahead and grab yourself a large mixing container, and we're going to pop our baking soda, our citric acid, and our Epsom salt in here. And we're just gonna go ahead and kind of mix the dry ingredients together just a little bit. And then we're gonna set this off to the side. We're actually gonna have to melt the cocoa butter down to use it, so I'm gonna pop it into a heat safe container. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna go ahead and turn our stove on to a low heat. And we're gonna pop our double boiler on here. Now for a double boiler, I use a saucepan with a silicone mat and a little bit of water and we will just pop our cocoa butter in there to melt. And then we'll go ahead and turn this off once the cocoa butter is melted and we will remove the cocoa butter. Now when I remove this, I like to come in with a washcloth and go ahead and wipe the bottom of the container because I don't want any water to get into this. Go ahead and grab your dry mixture and we'll add the cocoa butter in. At the same time, we're gonna add our polysorbate 80. And I'm gonna add the fragrance oil. And we're just gonna mix that all up. Now when you're mixing this, you're gonna have to mix it really, really well. So what I like to do is I will start out mixing it with my spatula, but then I like to move to mixing it with my hands. So when I'm mixing it with my hands, I'm going in and I'm really smushing everything together, breaking up any clumps of baking soda or anything else that might be in there, just making sure that we have a really good mixture. 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna separate this into two separate bowls. And depending on how many different colors you want, you can separate it into more. Now for the first one, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add a little bit of mica powder. So the thing about mica powder is, is it gives you a great colored bath bomb. The only thing is it doesn't color your bath water very good. Um, it's gonna leave you with more of a pastel-y color. Now when you're mixing this, you're gonna have to mix it really, really well. So what I like to do is I will start out mixing it with my spatula, but then I like to move to mixing it with my hands. So when I'm mixing it with my hands, I'm going in and I'm really smushing everything together, breaking up any clumps of baking soda or anything else that might be in there, just making sure that we have a really good mixture. There's our mixture with mica powder. Now in the next one, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use a lake dye, which is causing this to bubble up a little bit. Now the difference between the mica powder and the lake dye is a lake dye is going to actually color your bath water. So when you use a lake dye, it's going to make the bath water be a red color or whatever color that you use. It's just a more potent dye. And the same thing, we're just going to go in and mix that really good. And these are the two colors that we made. So the first one is the one that we made with uh, mica powder. And as you can see, it's a little bit more vibrant. And then the one that we made with the lake dye, which is a little bit of a lighter red color. For the next step in this process, you're gonna wanna put a little bit of witch hazel in a spray container. And give your mixture a couple sprays. So we're going for a consistency of like a wet sand consistency. Go ahead and mix this up really well. Now what I mean when I say wet sand, it's if you squeeze your bath bomb mixture together, see that one's just breaking apart in my hand. Now I use witch hazel for my bath bombs. You certainly can use rubbing alcohol. I like witch hazel a little bit better only because I don't get any fizziness with my bath bomb. I've had it before where I used rubbing alcohol and I seem to get just a little bit of reaction. So I typically lean towards switch hazel. Now by the texture of wet sand, I mean if you grab the mixture and you squeeze it in your hand and you drop it, if it holds its shape, it is at the consistency that you want it to be at. Now I'm using these little cups today. So we're just gonna go ahead and fill them up. And you really wanna press down on them. Like it's hard to see how hard I'm pressing, but I am pressing very hard. So we're gonna give it a really good press. And I don't have quite enough in here for another cupcake bath bomb, but I'm gonna save this and see if I have some of the one that we colored with the lake dye and then I can mix the two together. Same thing, we're gonna come in, spray that with some witch hazel and mix it all in. And then we'll grab our container and really pack it in there. Now, after I make one, I always check the consistency again just to see if it dried up on me at all. And then because I didn't have enough left of either to make a bath bomb, I'm gonna mix the two together. And this one is like half a bath bomb. We're gonna go ahead and let all of these sit out just until they dry all the way. Typically, you wanna leave them for four to six hours. I will normally leave them overnight. These are the ones that we made with our lake dye. These are the ones that we made with the mica powder, and this is the mixture of the two. 
Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some clear melt and pour and we're gonna make the little embeds on top. Now the reason why I'm using clear melt and pour is clear melt and pour is gonna give you a more vibrant color. If you use a white melt and pour soap, it's gonna give you more of a pastel -y color in the finished product. So it's completely up to you. I just really want the top to be pretty vibrant. We're gonna take our melt and pour soap. We're gonna pop it into a heat safe container and we're gonna pop this in the microwave. Now you're gonna put this in the microwave in 10 to 15 second intervals, mixing really well in between each one. Now that our soap is completely melted, we're gonna go ahead and pop in our fragrance oil and at the same time, a bit of mica powder. And we'll go ahead and we will mix that up in there really good. Sometimes the mica powder doesn't want to mix in. If you can see here, there's like some clumps of mica powder where it's not really mixing in. What you can do is grab rubbing alcohol. And if you spray the top, it's going to help to disperse that in there. Now it's completely optional if you want to scent this. Um, I know some people won't scent their little embeds. I like to, but you definitely don't have to if you don't want to. And then we're just going to go ahead and grab our mold and we will pour our embeds. and spray the top with rubbing alcohol to pop any bubbles and we're going to leave this to cool completely now that our embeds have cooled completely what we're going to do is go ahead and pop them out from the mold now I like to kind of pull at the sides a little bit and then I push up from the bottom and they kind of pop right out at you. Now that was a partial one. And there are your little embeds for the top of the cupcake. Now for this part we have three ingredients. So we have our melt and pour soap, then I have a whipped soap base. Now you can either buy this or you can make your own. Um, it's gonna be really solid like this until we whip it up, but then it's gonna soften up. And then I have the sugared strawberry fragrance oil. Now the reason why we do this is we need this to be pipeable, but we need it to become solid again. So the melt and pour soap is very solid. You know, it's soap. And then the whip soap is soft. Now you can't just use the whip soap because if you did that, this would never harden up and it's gonna be really difficult to package. Adding the melt and pour soap with the whip soap is gonna make it pliable enough to pipe, but then it's gonna completely harden. So this is how we're gonna get a solid top on our cupcake bath bomb. I'm gonna go ahead and add our whipped soap base into a very large mixing container. As you can see, this is very solid and we need to whip it up to get it into a better consistency for piping. Now this can take a little bit of work when you're doing it because it doesn't want to mix up, but just be patient. Start out on a low to medium speed and slowly increase it as you go. As you can see, after we whip it up, it goes from that hard consistency back into a nice whipped soap, light and fluffy consistency. I'm gonna set this off to the side for a minute. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and pop our melt and pour soap into a microwave safe container. Same thing, we're gonna pop this in the microwave. We're gonna allow it to go in 10 to 15 second bursts and then you mix well in between each burst until it's all the way melted. Now the reason why we do this and we heat it that way is we don't wanna overheat the soap. So oftentimes when you're mixing it, in between the bursts, it's gonna help melt this a little bit more than if you didn't. If the soap gets too hot, you risk it burning, and then you kind of wind up with a rubbery, not as good of a soap. So that's why we heat this this way. As you can see, this is starting to melt up a little bit, but it's not quite done, so we're gonna pop it back in there for a little bit longer. 
and then I'll check this again to see if it is melted and I still have some clumps in there. Now I'm going to keep mixing this just to see if they melt in a little bit for me or if I need to pop it in there for another 15 seconds. And that last little burst was enough to finish melting that so this is all the way melted. I'm just going to add the fragrance oil to it right now. And I'll go ahead and mix that in. And then we'll go ahead, we will grab our big container of whipped soap and we're just going to dump the melt and pour soap right in there with it. I'm going to mix this in by hand just a wee little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and bring in the hand mixer again. As you can see, it does not take long at all until it starts to be a thick consistency and you want to work pretty quickly. So I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to put all of this into my piping bag and then that way we will be all set to go ahead and pipe these bath bomb cupcakes. And then we're just going to come in with our piping bag. And we're going to pipe the top of it, push our embed in there, and then put a little bit oh, of sprinkles on there. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the same thing for the rest of our cupcakes. So we will go ahead, we'll pipe it, just pop the embed right on the top. Now you can either put the sprinkles on like right after you pipe it before you put the embed or after the embed. Either way is completely fine when you want to put those on. Now you can use biodegradable sprinkles or edible sprinkles in this. So the next thing that we're going to have to do is we are going to have to package these. Now I went ahead and I have this shrink wrap machine and if you don't have one like by all means you don't have to use one. I just think they look a little bit nicer when they're wrapped up like this. Now it is very important that you put them in some kind of sealed container. So what will happen if you don't is the melt and pour soap is going to absorb absorb moisture from the air and it's going to get glycerin dew or soap sweating as it's also called which is little drops of water all over the soap and it doesn't look nearly as nice also the bath bomb itself should be covered because you don't want the moisture from the air to go in and to get the bath bomb wet it can actually cause it to react depending on how humid your area is now it does take just a little bit of time to do these, but once you have them in the package, you're just gonna go ahead, hit them with a heat gun. And what I like to do is kind of press on the corners and I find that that makes it just look a little bit cuter than it does if you don't. And then before I end this video, I wanted to go ahead and show you the bath bombs in action. So we're gonna pull it out of the container and just pop it in. The first one is the one that we made with the lake dye. And I know the color doesn't look as good here, but I promise it does look better in person than I can get on camera. And the second one is the one that we made with the mica powder. Um, either is fine. I prefer the lake dye in a bath bomb, but mica powder certainly works also. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed making and using your bath bomb cupcakes as much as I did. Bye.